Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here to talk to you today about how to measure someone's heart rate through palpation. So essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using your fingertips and specifically the four fingers, not so much the thumb, to feel the heart pounding in an artery somewhere in the body. So when the heart beats, it pushes a sort of a bolus of blood, so sort of a one large dosage or one large uh, volume of blood into the arteries and then it goes through the arteries kind of like that. So it, it stretches the arteries as it goes along. So if you find an artery that's close to the surface of the body, so there's one here called the radial artery, and it's going to be on the thumb side of the hand, so you have one on both hands. And if you kind of feel for the grooves on the inside and in the center of the um, wrist that are from the tendons, and you kind of go to the towards the thumb side between the bone and those grooves from the tendon, and there is that radial artery. So what I usually tell people to do is to take their hand, whatever hand they're going to use to feel for the pulse, and to sort of wrap it around the back side of the person's wrist. And so when you do that, and you kind of grip the wrist, you have a nice steady hand uh, holding their arm still, and also it puts these four fingers right there in that groove so you can feel that pulse very easily. So make sure you put four fingers in that groove because you don't know exactly where you're going to feel the strongest pulse, so having as much surface area on their skin as possible is going to increase your likelihood of feeling that pulse and being able to keep that pulse going as you're counting. The other places that are very common to do it, sometimes you'll hear people talking about the brachial artery, which is going to be if you look at the bicep here. So if you take the bicep and you kind of run your fingers down around the, the outsides of it, it kind of comes to a point right about here, right before you get to this inacutable space where you usually get blood draws taken. Um, right where it comes to the point, just kind of go over to the right just a tad, and somewhere right around there, you should be able to feel the pulse. So for me, I can feel it right there. So again, you want to use all four fingertips, put it in there, and just kind of push firmly. Not hard enough to hurt the person, but hard enough where you're going to make sure that you're pushing any fat out of the way, you're compressing the skin a little bit, and you're going to feel that pulse, hopefully. If you don't feel it on the first try, move up or down a little bit um, to see if you can find it somewhere else. But try to stay in that sort of groove between the bicep, and if you get far enough, between the uh, bicep and the tricep. So somewhere in this line here is where you're going to find the brachial artery through palpation. The other location that people commonly do is the carotid artery in the neck. All right, so both the brachial artery and the radial artery in the wrist are fairly easy and safe to find. Brachial artery is a little harder, but the carotid artery is super easy to find, but you have a safety concern with this. So with the carotid artery, um, you have to be concerned with how much you're sort of palpating and massaging to find the artery. So the carotid artery contains what is called a baroreceptor, and it's essentially a stretch receptor. So if you're going in there and sort of massaging that, and you're pushing repeatedly on the artery, you are going to be stretching that artery a little bit. And doing so is going to tell your brain that maybe the blood pressure is a little too high at the moment, because that's what the baroreceptors do. And so if it perceives the blood pressure is too high, it's going to try to lower it, and that can cause people to black out. So they can pass out, they can black out, um, and that's not a good thing, obviously. The other concern is if you're working with somebody that might have a little bit of plaque buildup inside their carotid artery, if you're sort of massaging and rubbing on that, you may dislodge some plaque, which would cause that plaque to go up into the brain and cause potentially a stroke. Uh, so you do have some concerns with the carotid artery. So if you're going to palpate somebody's carotid artery, try to find it as quickly as you can. And try not to get in there and kind of move around. Just get your hand there, find it, and try to keep your hands nice and steady. Most of the time, you're not going to have any problems. Even if you're doing a little bit of massaging and palpating, you're not going to have many problems. But if you're really in there pushing and grinding with your fingers for you know a minute or two at a time, you might have some issues. Or if you're working with a sort of at-risk population. But to find the carotid artery, you essentially, if you had the person raise their head, you can see the sort of jawline here and then the bit of the sort of, uh, so where the head and the neck kind of connect, you can see that line as well. So go right below that line where the head and the neck connect, go on either side of the trachea. So find a nice soft spot right against the trachea. On either side, you should be able to feel for that carotid artery. So here on both sides of my neck. 
So when you are doing this, so you're going to find whatever artery you want to work with. So the radial is the most commonly used one. It's probably um, the easiest to find that it has no real health concerns related to using it. So you want to use the radial artery whenever possible. Um, carotid artery is probably your next best bet. Brachial artery is going to be the hardest to feel. All right, so anyways, you find the artery that you're going to use. You palpate until you find the actual pulse. And then what you're going to want to do is have some sort of stopwatch or a clock on the wall that you're going to look at. If you are using a stopwatch where you can start and stop the watch on your command, what you're going to do is you're going to try to get uh, sort of a rhythm of that pulse, so it's beating, beat, 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 like that. And so you're going to find that rhythm, and you're going to want to start the stopwatch on a beat, and that is beat zero. So that counts as zero. The next beat would be one, then two, then three, and so on and so forth. And you're going to count for a period of time. How long you count depends on what you're doing, if it's a resting measurement, an exercise measurement, um, or your preference, or your uh, how much time you have to waste. Um, but typically at rest, you want to go for at least 30 seconds to a minute. If it's an exercise measurement, you're usually looking more at 15 seconds. Um, the lower the, um, the length of time that you are counting for, the more air you're introducing into the heart rate because you're going to multiply it out to, uh, to get to a minute. So if it's 15 seconds, you're going to multiply by 4 to get to 60 seconds. Or if you're counting for an entire minute, then there's no multiplication and there's really very little error to it. So um, you're going to then count the beats and multiply it out to whatever, um, to whatever you need to to get it to, uh, to 60 seconds, and that is the person's heart rate. So again, if you are starting a stopwatch, start the stopwatch on a beat, that is beat zero, and then count one, two, three, so on and so forth. If you don't have a stopwatch, you're using like a, a, a clock on the wall with a minute hand or a second hand rather, um, then it's a little harder to sort of start on a beat. So you're just going to make sure you have the pulse and then whenever the second hand gets to a convenient location on the clock hand, you know, either on the 12 or the 6 or, you know, the 3 or the, um, or the 9, somewhere sort of convenient where it's easy to see when you've gone all the way around or halfway around, then you just start counting. So the first beat in that case um, could be counted as beat 1. So it's kind of up to whatever your situation is. Ideal, you would have a stopwatch though. All right, so that was a real quick introduction on how to do heart rate through palpation. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments below and I'll try to answer those. Otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.